Welcome back to Dielectric Videos. When you first get your Arduino Nanos, there are a couple of modifications that I highly recommend for hardening these microcontrollers for use in the automotive environment. The first modification that I recommend doing is removing the linear regulator from the back of the Nano. This linear regulator converts the elevated voltage VIN supply, which is typically between 7 and 12 volts, down to the 5 volt power for the microcontroller. Since we already have a dedicated 5 volt rail on our engine control system, this linear regulator is unused, and in fact it can prove to be quite a liability when operating in the automotive environment. I have personally experienced this regulator failing low impedance from the 5 volt supply to ground due to the fact that the VIN pin is not decoupled to ground by any sort of capacitors. If this regulator begins to malfunction or misbehave, it will start drawing a large amount of current from the 5 volt rail and can even lead to a microcontroller shutdown situation. I have actually had that happen and it is rather unfortunate when it happens while driving. As a result, the removal of this linear regulator is a very easy modification to make for significantly improving the reliability of your nanos in the field. Just take your soldering iron, desolder the three pins on the front and then the thermal tab from the back of the regulator and pull it clean off. Simple as that. Another modification that I recommend making is adding a Faraday cage in front of the microcontroller and in front of its oscillator crystal. This makes sure that any high voltage induced electromagnetic interference, like you might find from the spark plug ignition wires, will not uh, interact with or cause uh, crashing or other uh, unwanted behavior from the microcontroller. It's pretty simple to install this Faraday cage. I recommend using a copper mesh or even a copper foil, which you can easily solder to, and you can get for relatively low cost on Amazon, and basically covering it over the microcontroller and crystal and soldering it to the USB port to provide a grounding path. It's important to provide a grounding path so that the Faraday cage itself doesn't just become an antenna and repeat the interference down to the chip. When it's soldered to the ground, the current has a path to flow through to ground and the potential of the screen never rises, which protects the chip from EMI. I also recommend adding an insulating layer underneath the Faraday cage, which I typically make out of fish paper, but you can also use a heavy cardstock or a plastic layer as well, and this just is there to prevent the Faraday cage from electrically contacting any of the pins or any of the pads on the microcontroller chip and prevents any short circuits from occurring. Finally, I recommend putting a bit of epoxy on both sides of the insulating pad just to keep everything solidified in place. This will make sure it doesn't vibrate loose or break off when the engine is running or the car is vibrating. Let's take a look at how this modification performs in a real automotive environment. You can see how an unmodified Arduino Nano, when placed in close proximity to an ignition coil wire, will inevitably result in a crash of the microcontroller. As you can see, the LED has ceased to blink, it is now crashed out. In contrast to this, a modified Arduino Nano, when placed in close proximity to the spark ignition wiring, does not crash. It remains fully operational no matter how close you get it to the actively operating ignition coil, and it continues to blink without a problem. Here you can see now we have successfully implemented a quick 10 minute modification to the Arduino Nano, which effectively bulletproofs it against EMI and high voltage interference in the automotive environment. Thanks for watching Dielectric Videos, and I will see you next time.